So they'll be calling you a radical. So Netflix is, it's pure fiction. I mean, it's 100% fiction. And they'll tell you it's fiction. So as you know, I, I consulted on this documentary for free, just pseudo de facto, backdoor. So, you know, doing my typo work, my Fukushima documentary hat, this is what I got for all my hard work, the world's foremost expert on Fukushima. This is what I got. You know, it got stole a few years ago. Lisa's car got stole. It was in it. So after all those years, I've got everybody in the world looking, looking. You got to give me one. Got to make me one. So it's been replaced. <laughs> God, you know, I never took it off for a long time because, you know, it was kind of like the my badge of honor for all my incredible work. And so I got it back, and this one's actually even in better shape. So the Fukushima documentary is pure fiction. The Netflix, they tell you that. You know, and the... Dumping the water out of the tanks going to dump is fiction. They've been dumping the entire fucking time. Now, when I hear somebody put into print media, I mean, the misinformation that Google allows is over the top. So my work as the professor of the number one school of business in the United States, I did lots of work on Mach 1, Mach 2 nuclear reactors, due diligence, economics, all of it. And... I knew these reactors couldn't handle a shake. Neither can Diablo Canyon. Neither could San Onofre at the time. San Onofre shut down in a dry cast. That's what I was doing down there when this got stole. And so I knew factually the spent fuel pools couldn't handle 7.6 on the Richter. And the cores could not handle anywhere in north of 7.8 or 7.9. When I saw it was a nine, I knew there was no diesel generator. I mean, that whole dog and pony show. The cores were fractured immediately on the shake. The spent fuel pools were broke wide open immediately before the tsunami even came. It busted all to hell, blown to and you saw it explode. And everybody called it, you know, the lies of Fukushima. You know, scientists are mystified. They're baffled to stump. Kevin Blanche is the world foremost expert on Fukushima. Bar none. Bar none. And so, you know, it, it blows my mind that Netflix makes a documentary uh, and puts out a dramatization, pure fiction. Now, the Chernobyl piece, the Chernobyl piece that HBO put out is excellent. It is fucking excellent. I remember in the San Francisco airport, that's how I got the original hat. You know, she's like, Kevin, I'm waiting for a connected flight to Monterey to get my typo work done. By the way, I'll be at Idaho National Lab in the morning. I'm headed up there in the morning. So to get my work done, you know, as I've been recovering from ML leukemia and uh, I had open heart surgery for the second time, as you know, I had a massive heart attack. You know, she would never have my perfectly good heart. I have a pacemaker now. What a fucking war this has been. So the only thing I, I so they're like, you got time to watch, you know, this trailer? And it was even deeper than trailer. And so I, I had a long layover. And then she says, I'll send you the rest when you're in Monterey. Remember I lost my cell phone there? And the uh, two PhDs from MIT had been watching my videos and stuff. And they drove over to the San Francisco and actually f retrieved it and brought it to me in Monterey. And the, the new two nuclear physicists from MIT. And uh, so I watched it, and I'm like, you won't put that up. You're no way going to put this up. Well, we'll see, but I think we're going to put it all up, just what you're seeing. I'm like, I'll believe it when I see it. If you do, I'll love you guys forever. And this is of all my work and all the things I have, and I've got stuff sent to me from all over the world. And I mean all over the world. You name it, you wouldn't believe the stuff that, you know, not so much anymore. It used to show up to me in the mail from incredibly important people. You know, nuclear physicists, you know, all kinds of people. You wouldn't believe what I have, including that. Autographed. That's autographed. 
you know, including the Los Alamos pennant, which is real. You know, I mean, it's authentic like me. So, this is really my favorite of everything that's ever been sent to me. The original, well, the original was given to me by HBO. You know, she says, here, Kevin, you know, and then she bought me a juice in that juice bar in San Francisco, which is the only juice bar you can find in the whole freaking city anymore. And when I did all those videos walking around San Francisco looking for a juice bar, I mean, I walked, I did so much work in the Bay, you know, and so, so much work, period. I think about the work. So someone found it for me and they're like, here, you know, it's been a long time, a long time. I opened it up, I almost started to cry because it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. The HBO Chernobyl documentary, to me, is a masterpiece. And I remember when it came up and I watched the whole thing, I just cried. I'm like, what a kick in the teeth to the nuclear industry. Kevin Blanche, I took him to their knees. You know, I've been battling my always my work at Center Over Center Over never shuts down, but you know, the PR thing, but Fukushima, this is part of the propaganda machine. A dramatization, that's all it is. It's pure fiction. What really happened at Fukushima? And you can, you know, you panty paint about Chernobyl. The documentary HBO It is a fucking masterpiece and it's incredibly, incredibly accurate. And this comes from the world's foremost expert, bar none, on Fukushima. And, you know, I, I talked to Igor. I announced to the world that when Igor died in the car wreck, I was fighting with the IAEA. I was in Vienna at the time, and I would walk home. Stand Provod's beautiful, incredible place in the inner circle. Walk, God, I mean, what a beautiful, oh my God. I would walk all the way over the Danube, freaking all the way through the old Ferris wheel. Remember when I put the beer on top of my head, still on the table at Oktoberfest in the oldest fairground, that old creepy Ferris wheel, walk through there, walk all the way, get into Vienna, walk right through Stefan Gross, walk right through the, oh, 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 cut through, right through the museum, the Leopold, I mean, right through it. Up that beautiful road into that beautiful area apartment. I mean, wow, romantic, how incredible. I was walking over the Danube, and a young man from Austria called me, and he says, because I had met Igor not very long. You know, I went to a thing with him. And anyway, he says he's been killed. And I heard him put up a YouTube video on the bridge going over the Danube in Vienna. He was killed in a car wreck. He's the one that exposed it. He's like, his friend had a helicopter. Let's go in. He says, are you kidding? If they don't shoot us down, they'll throw us in the gulag for life, if not kill us. I met Gorbachev twice. You know, his wife died of this brutal disease that's in my body. I've been sick the whole time. I don't think people realize this. I got a stomach ache. I run into one of my old nurses at genius from Ogden last night. Beautiful, incredible woman. It's like, Kevin, you know, we had a long discussion about my stay and the fact that I went on 11, 11, 11 and, she, you know, all those bone marrow biopsies and she told me some stuff that really bothered me about some kickbacks that were going on and anyway, San Diego in my treatment and just the fact that I go in the bone marrow transplant on 11, 11, 11 with ML De Nuvo. And she talked about how I was the pioneer, me and Brian. And she's like, how many people are surviving it now? Exactly the disease. She says, not then and not before. But she says, you are such a line in the sand, Kevin. You know, Fukushima, such a line in the sand. Your cancer is, you, your story blows my mind. And now the people after you are surviving this disease in really nice numbers when I'm a one percenter when I had it. 
Igor went in and they shot those photos and he was old school photographer and the radiation room all but one photograph and he got it up in that beautiful, incredible city, Vienna. Hope to be back there again. I'll be up at Idaho National Lab tomorrow. What a fucking nightmare that is. You know, Blake, my friend from here, owns, he well, pretty well bought the whole city, Atomic City. You know, the little bar population, I think it's 24. But I get all the word. I'll get the word what's going on in the SMR fairy tale bullshit. That's exactly what it is, an SMR fairy tale. But I think you watch the documentary Chernobyl, you understand nuclear energy. I think it's that good. The only thing I don't agree is, you know, I met Gorbachev twice. The fact that they try to spin it in that it was the old Soviet Union being cheapskates and not, you know, using different technologies that we supposedly use. I call bullshit, you know, a graphite reactor, one core that blew up and they drank it as a seven. The skill and grows as a seven. Fukushima is many, many. So you watch the documentary Chernobyl. And you times that by many thousands. That's Fukushima. Three full core meltdowns. They blew up immediately. Spent fuel pools six, seven count in the common spent fuel. Mox fuel. Mox fuel's against the law in the United States. So they just, which that fairy tale they, remember when they secretly brought it back into the Tower to Babel into South Carolina? And then it was friends of mine who were truckers who contacted me. You know, I have such an army. I did. And they're like, Kevin, we're hauling nuclear waste. They're lined up to whip in New Mexico. I'm like, oh, God. Where from? South Carolina. It's coming in via Japan. I'm like, oh, Jesus. So three full core meltdowns never happened before. Never happened at Chernobyl. 780,000 men entombed in Chernobyl. And I, I think what the documentary does show, too, is the sacrifice. I should show you this. Yeah, let's show you this. This is important because, you know, the girl that I was involved with so long, you know, she was feminine as it gets. Remember when I used to do all that work for man? God, they were the greatest. So, you know, as my father died of ABL, acute bilassic leukemia in the prime of his life, nuked to death in a test site, the girl that I was involved with, that's her. That's her. She died. At 38 years old, of AML, leukemia. Dr. Gimbal was her doctor also. Born and raised in Ukraine. Incredible woman. Best anti nuker ever, ever, besides Frida Meisenblau. So, I learned a lot. That the sacrifice that the Soviet Union, Gorbachev, and the people of Ukraine made for the world, 780,000. She said they came to her door and they knocked and her brother was 18 and one was 17. She says, they're called up. You got 30 minutes to get your stuff in order. Let's go. And they went. Who both passed away of cancer. And so, so did she. So, of leukemia, all three of them. The sacrifice they made, Gorbachev deserves multiple Nobel Prizes. Igor deserves a Nobel Prize. The men of Chernobyl, uh, the Fukushima 50, that's a fairy tale. The head of the Fukushima, you can look it up, he died of leukemia in 23, his mother, you see me. I was not kettled. I was not squashed in Japan. Go ask Kathy Iwani. Go ask Rachel Godoya. You know, they're both living there. Go ask them. So, why would Netflix put out a dramatization? Uh, you know, it's a total, it's a fable. You know, it's a soap opera. It's, well, I think it's, I think it's offensive as hell. You know, what happened to Fukushima is the greatest ecological catastrophe in human history. Bar none. Bar none. The cover-up is the greatest crime in human history. The fact that I got classified by the Army Corps engineers while I'm in critical condition. <laughs> the fact that I go into the bone marrow test on 11-11-11 and they try to stuff my lightning back into the bottle, try to put my toothpaste back in, 
Too late, baby. So, thank you for sending me the hat. I am thrilled, and it was I got it from a documentary filmmaker that I used to work for, Cheryl Wollen. She said, Kevin, we got to do one on you. I said, yeah, there's been lots of people approaching me over the years. You know, she says, your story blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that I'm still alive. And so I'll be up at Idaho National Lab, back to work. I've gained 20. I got down to 138. I'm back to one, right around 160, which I need to be 165. I'm starting to come back. You know, I have a pacemaker. So... I'm thrilled to get this back. I was just heartbroken because I accidentally left it in Lisa's vehicle and she got her vehicle stolen. And this one's even in better shape. So you watch the HBO documentary on Chernobyl. And again, it's a fucking masterpiece. It really is so good. It's accurate. It's really accurate. You times it by many thousands and you're going to get Fukushima. You can watch this Netflix freaking fairy tale all you want, you know, if you like watching Days of Our Lives or, you know, and soap opera because it, there's nothing really real about it. Kevin Blanche, you know, I'm the real thing. And I can't believe somebody hasn't set me down. And, you know, Jack Russell did that great interview on PBS in Oregon. I look, I watched that again the other day and I'm like, how accurate was I? You know, and that was on the second anniversary of Fukushima 2013. I look back on some of my videos from day one. Oh, my God. How accurate was I? And all the incredible historic work that I've done. You know, what did I get for it? Love it. All I ever wanted was my peace of mind. Thank you, everybody, who supported the historic work. Without you, we would have never made history. And we did. We have made history. And we continue to make history. You know, so thank you, everybody, for you know, I could use some donations, head it up there. I'll get some good footage up there, and I'll get the word in Idaho. Getting down. <laughs> so, thank you for everybody who's been my friend through this whole ugly process. It's been brutal. It's been brutal. I get by with a little help from my friends. Hmm. Hmm. That really should be the logo of the anti-nuclear movement. It really, that's the original. It, it says so much. I want to paint it right out of my head. Clear back in the 90s. Just came home one day. I had the blank easel in my big, beautiful house, my art studio, which is all gone. And I just, so fast, I'm like, wow, where did that come from? Huh. Intuitive mind. It was probably what, couldn't have been a year or two before she got sick and died. Well, the good die young. The angels that the nuclear industry took. They're responsible for the cover of Fukushima, the plume born hours. They watch out over me. Freedom eyes above. Kevin, on the two hundred ice water, she was full of cancer. She requested the with the meeting with me. She's worried about her English, she told Bavad. She grilled me for four hours. He walked out as I was like, Oh my god, I can't believe I just said I go to Bath and they called me up on the stage and gave me some champagne. Standing ovation at beautiful theater. Kevin, it never picked me. It never picked you. Or it picked. <laughs> you never picked it. I never picked it. It picked us. You're the tip of the spear. Don't you drop it. You fight on. I know you're. She was dying. And she knew it. She never told anybody. The greatest anti-nuclear activist, maybe in the world ever. Pretty much and blah. On the 200th anniversary of Waterloo, you think about that. What a story, what a path, what a fight. You know, it's not over, but what did I get for it? And I'm happy to have it. 
I'm thrilled, actually. All I ever wanted was my peace of mind. Stay in tune.